Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and this is my Take Another Look webinar, where I'm teaching the book of Revelation verse by verse. And so we're glad you're joining us this morning. So we're going to be watching for everybody to get chimed in here. But um, in the meantime, uh, we just want you to get um, uh, the word of God. And so uh, we're watching. There you go. Many are starting to watch. Thank you. Uh, so we're, we're continuing in the book of Revelation. And if you're a first time viewer, if this is the first time you watched, take another look, then I want to tell you that what I'm doing is teaching the verse, book of Revelation verse by verse and sharing with you some things that I believe the Holy Spirit has showed with me. And so uh, it's important that we understand the events surrounding uh, what the Apostle John experienced and his experiences in the heavenly realms. And we want to look at uh, how that this was just prior to A.D. 70. So it's already been done. So that's what we're trying to understand. Now, in my weekly Bible study that is not aired live, uh, we're in uh, chapter 12, the midst, maybe toward the end of chapter 12. And some really valuable information has come out. But uh, here we're in chapter 8, and so we're continuing to look at this, what I call uh, the unveiling of the Father's heart. The revelation of Jesus Christ actually would be translated from the Greek language, the unveiling uh, of the anointed one. And what the book of Revelation is about is how that Christ is unveiled in sons and daughters of God, how that Christ is unveiled in us. And so as we're looking at this truth today, uh, I want to just say just before I start reading and just before I start talking about these verses that many Christians have thrown away valuable revelation in the past simply because they believed some things differently for way too long only because someone said so and someone said that it was truth. I was raised in the day where there was all kinds of films shown and all kinds of teachings on the disaster and the havoc and and the the Antichrist and and uh, the Battle of Armageddon and the Great Tribulation and all those things, all the rapture videos. I've been down that road only to find out that that is not what the book of Revelation says. So I'm not trying to take away what you believe in. I'm not trying to take away something that is valuable to you, but I'm just simply telling you if there is a truth that we need to see, then you know, may we open our eyes and discover what is in the Father's heart for each of us. So let's continue now as we talk about what John sees, what he hears next, uh, as he's showing us how to operate from a heavenly realm while ministering in the earthly realm. Some of you are dealing with distress this morning, uh, pressures, uh, uh, hardships, not understanding that God has made a provision a long time ago so that we can actually walk in this life free from the cares of this life, and we can walk as kingdom sons and daughters and actually do what John did, which was to enter into a <coughs> an under... <coughs> excuse me, enter into an uh, understanding of a heavenly realm, a third heaven dimension, and still operating in the earthly realm. I just say we we operate in the heavenly realm. We live in the heavenly realm, but we work in the earthly realm. So we touch all of these realms, and we do it uh, as Christ did, even through, through the things that Christ went through. So uh, as we look at this today, let's go to Revelation chapter 8, verse 12 and 13, and we're trying to finish this up. Okay, um, having some crackling in my voice, so um, so I've got to uh, reboot. Hang on, right there, folks. I'll be. Okay, I'm back. I hope that did not disrupt the broadcast. Stay right there with me. All right. And we should be back. Okay. Now, um, so I'm listening uh, to the video and I'm trying to make sure that everything is uh, up and running. So if you're hearing this today, then um, uh, please, by all means, uh, continue to watch. Amen. 
Okay. And thank you so much, everyone who is hooking up this morning. All right. Now, so Revelation chapter 8, verse 12 uh, through 13 says, Then the fourth angel sounded, and the third of the, a third of the sun was struck, and the third of the moon, and the third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third, uh, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night, or a third of the night, uh, I looked and heard an angel, and some translators say this actually should read an eagle. He saw an eagle flying through the midst of heaven, and there, and of course, there's symbolism here, and we'll we'll get into this. Uh, I, it's flying in the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" three times to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Now, generally, we get the idea that angels are uh, fl fluffy, um, uh, uh, you know, things that float uh, in the sky. Uh, and I do believe in an angelic host. Uh, I just believe that uh, there are some things that's different what, than what we have traditionally believed because the word tra uh, angels is the Greek word ang angelos, and it actually uh, is translated messenger uh, more times than any other way. So these messengers were making a sound. Now, uh, uh, let's notice this, that as we notice the fourth angel making a sound, we can see from previous lessons, whether by angel blowing a trumpet or by the voice of an angel making a sound, this is symbolic of God speaking something to his people. So whenever we see trumpets in scripture, we need to pay attention because God is speaking to us. And, uh, and that is what that represents. Now, once again, even though the book of Revelation was not written to us, listen to me, the book of Revelation was not written to us but it was certainly written for us. In other words, there are things we can learn and benefit and experience uh, uh, that Christ has already done, and we're coming into this, okay? So uh, we, we all want to notice that for over 1,900 years, God has been making a call uh, in the hearts of mankind for sons and daughters to arise and be transformed into the full manifestation of Christ. This is why I'm teaching the book of Revelation, which is translated the unveiling of the anointed one. And it is the revealing of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in us. I want to tell you something, whether you can believe this or not, whether you can embrace this or not, that, that Christ did a work on Calvary uh, in the death, burial, and resurrection. And what he did has been done in you, even if you're not aware of it yet. That's the problem with modern Christianity and modern society is that everything has to be proven. We have to either feel it or see it. And the reality is, is you don't have to feel it or see it. You can believe it. Amen. And so this is what I meant by there are doors that are open, which no man can shut. God has opened a door into your heart. No one can shut it. Even if you reject him, you're not shutting that door. Only temporarily are you rejecting the information that's been given to you. But this is what this book is about. It's the unveiling or the revealing of what Christ has done in you. And so that it can come to the outside of you so you can be a blessing to other people. All right. Now, it's significant to note what happened on the fourth day uh, of the creativeness of God as he arranged the cosmos long ago. Uh, look at Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 14 through 18. I want to read this to you, and we want to look at the comparison and how this fourth trumpet sounding uh, is, is uh, we're seeing a symbolism in Genesis 1, verses 14 through 18. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Let them uh, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light to the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He may. And of course, the greater light, we're talking about the SU in the sun and the lesser light. We're talking about the moon that has no uh, no 
uh, light of its own, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, he also made the stars. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. Now, I want to tell you here, whether you believe it or not, there are many events in the Bible that actually took place, but even the events that actually took place, there is a symbolic meaning that applies to you and I. So as we saw in the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse 12 and 13, it looks like there are some similarities between Genesis and Revelation that we are, are, are that are worth talking about. The great light. Uh, in the heaven speaks to us about many um, uh, great examples of things either taking place in the realm of the spirit or things that have taken place in the realm of the spirit. Uh, and and so when we look at Genesis, we see things that have, have that are going to take place or that are prophetic about what's going to happen. But uh, when we look at the book of Revelation, we see what John was experiencing and what came next. But there was an end to that. There was a finish, a completion. And that completion has taken, you know, what God says is I've started a good work in you and I'll bring it to completion. So the reality is, is he has started that work in you, whether you're aware of it or not. Now, let's notice this. The sun, moon, stars of the heavens, exist in a realm where God is sovereign and Jesus is Lord. All right, next I want to tell you this, that all at all times our God rules far above sin, confusion, sorrow, strife, pain, and even death that many experience in this earth realm. Is it the will of God? You know, the Bible said that God will wipe away all tears from your eyes and, and so on and so forth. Well, does he do that or has he done that? Think about that question. Okay, now, no matter what uh, uh, what sense these words are used in that I've just shared with you, whether natural or supernatural in their meanings, the sun, the moon, and stars are used to represent the heavenly spiritual role and dominion of God. So what we're looking is that the God of the heaven, a God of heaven or the God of the heavens or the heavenlies, the heavenly realm, I like to say, or the, the spiritual, supernatural God of the universe, the dominion of God. And why the writer that this is why the writer of Genesis says about these great lights which shine from the heavens. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the sun and the lesser light to rule the night. So in other words, the sun is the greater light, which reflects onto the moon, which is the lesser light. The bottom line is that the heavens rule or the heavenly realm rules. I want you to understand that you interact with the heavenly realms every single day. It's not a place you're going to go to. Now, don't misunderstand me. Do I believe there is a place? I do. It's a realm. It's the place where God lives, uh, but God also lives in you. And that's a, another lesson. But And I don't want to get too heavy on that. But the word heaven literally means in the Greek language and in the Hebrew language, the abode of God, the place where God lives. So if I ask you, where does God live? Some people will say up in the sky. Some people will say in some other universe. But many people will say, he lives in me. Well, how do you know that? Well, I feel him. I sense him. The word of God says so. There's many answers that people give. But the reality is, is that this word means the abode of God. So once again, you've got to deal with the fact that Jesus lives in you, okay? Everybody's got to come face to face with that reality and say, you know what? There's things I haven't seen yet that I don't know, really know about. But what I do know about is that Jesus lives in me. Go with the things you know. So you are of the earth as a physical earthly being, but you are also a spiritual or a supernatural being and are of the heavenly company or out of the abode of God who is in you. Notice what Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 says, for in him, in him, in Christ Jesus, 
dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. I want you to hear these words, because right now I'm speaking to somebody in this moment. I, by the Spirit of God, I know somebody does not feel complete today. Somebody does not feel whole. Somebody does not feel accepted. Somebody is struggling today, and I want you to know that you are complete because of the fullness of God that abides in you. You are complete. The Lord completes you. You know, if you're a married person, you have a spouse, you might have said to your married spouse in your wedding vows, you might have said, you complete me. And while that might be a reality it, concerning our physical needs or concerning our even our emotional connections with others, the reality is, is that you, the reason you are complete is because of God. <laughs> So the fullness of God encompasses or includes Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and all that God is. And guess where he lives? He lives in you. All right. Now let's look at John chapter 14, verse 20. Amen. John 14, verse 20. And we're really glad that uh, you are joining us today uh, because uh, uh, it, it's it's very encouraging, uh, uh, and, and thank you for your comments. I can't get to all your comments right now, but I will I will make sure to look at them. Amen. Okay, now um, <coughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord, all the way from Australia. Awesome, awesome. Okay, now let's continue. All right, John 14, verse 20. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So here Jesus speaks about the indwelling of the Father and Son in you, as well as when the Holy Spirit descended out of the heavenly realm, he provided a witness inside of us which tells us where God is. So when I ask you, where does God live? You might say he lives in me. Now, why would you say that? Because you sense that. You know, the word says so. You feel that when you pray, when you communicate with God, you have this interaction. It doesn't come from somewhere out in the in the universe. It comes from within you. And so he says in that day, now that day is not talking about the day that you die in this earth and go to heaven. That day is talking about, look, the Holy Spirit's coming in. In John 14 and John 16, Jesus prophesies a whole lot about the coming Holy Spirit. So what we see here uh, in Genesis 1 is the idea of rulership and dominion. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. It doesn't say he came to seek and save those who were lost, but that which was lost. Do you know the thing that was lost in the book of Genesis was dominion, was our, our, our position of authority? Uh, and and so here, here's a comment by teacher and commentator, J. Preston Eby, and says, the God of heaven rules over all. And we can now open our eyes, the eyes of our understanding to behold the wondrous truths that God's elect sons are destined with their sovereign, uh, uh, with their sovereign and glorious father to become a, the constellation of the spiritual heavens, the illuminaries uh, the or and rulers of God's sky. Now, when we think of the sky, we think of what we have seen with our natural eyes. But what we don't think about is a supernatural universe, a parallel dimension. You're in this natural realm where you see, you touch, you feel, you think, you have emotions about. But there's also a universe that is 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 parallel, and I don't mean side by side, but you're in that universe. The heavens are in you. The throne of God is in you. He is seated on the throne of your heart. And so we need to realize that you are an illuminary. You are a bright light to someone bringing the word of God. That's why the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, his chosen elect, so that the Christ in us can penetrate the gloom and the doom that is currently hoarding over the earth realm in the form of darkness and sorrow. Now, uh, this is not my lesson. I don't want to get too heavy in this, but 
we place so much emphasis on Satan that Satan almost has become an object of worship. When the reality is, as God said in Genesis 3, that he commanded the serpent to crawl on his belly all the days of his life. Isn't that right? All right. And then the Bible calls him a lot of different things uh, as we've gotten the translations from the original to the English language to modern languages. But all the way in Revelation 12, he reminds us of who he is. And he is that serpent of old called or mythologically named the devil or Satan. And so we need to quit uh, focusing on the darkness and on the sorrow and start focusing on the light that is in us because the light that is in us is Christ Jesus that is shining to others. And the more he shines is determined by, uh, as he shines in you, is determined by the uh, level of, of revelation you understand. The Bible says the entrance of God's word gives light or brings light. So you are burning, not will, but br uh, burning uh, at, at bright and bringing deliverance and order to the chaos of man's failures and despair. That's you. That's your role. That's your call. That's your ministry of reconciliation. Okay, now here is an Old Testament prophetic word about us in the in uh, about us in the new. And here's what it says in Isaiah chapter sixty, verse one and three. <coughs> Isaiah sixty, verse one, two, and three. Okay. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen, not has risen, not will uh, not ha will be risen, but is risen, positive present tense, upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the deep darkness, the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Uh, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So here is God's reaction to the Jewish people of Israel about rejecting the gospel of Christ. Now we find a parallel about this in Romans 11 verses 5 through 6 that says, for, if for uh, even so then at this present time there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace but if it is of works it is no more grace otherwise work is no more work so god has a people who will not bow their knee to anyone but jesus i want you to hear that because i'm going to repeat that shortly uh, in a different way but god has a people who will not bow their knee to anyone but jesus when we say anyone but jesus you can say i won't bow my knee to satan but you can also say i will not bow my knee to darkness or you can say i will not bow my knee to negative talk or negative influences you could say, I will not bow my knee to anything other than the doctrine of Jesus Christ. But here, here's the thing, folks. Uh, God does not throw away his people Israel just because they rejected uh, the gospel. Uh, he simply has handed the job of dominion over to a people who will receive Jesus, who is the living word of God. So what are we receiving? The Gentile nation has now been called upon by God to be the light to all people, and that includes the Jewish nation. So even so, when God, even when God was accused of killing the prophets in the Old Testament uh, and tearing down their altars uh, of the old, God says, I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed their knee to Baal. So the next thing God did was he appoints a new covenant remnant of people. And there is a new covenant remnant or a remnant. Of, of, this is not a remnant of Jew, Jew, Gentiles or Jews, but it is a remnant of the saints of God who will not bow their knee to anyone except the risen Christ. I want to tell you the revelation of the resurrection of Jesus is so, so powerful. We need to understand the revelation of Jesus. We need to understand who he is. We need to understand that he lives in us. We need to understand that Christ loves people. Amen. He loves you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, uh, 
Now, in Revelation 8, verse 12, I want to get back to this. I, and this is like college level information. It's a cram course. It's stuff that you're going to have to study and you're going to have to, to uh, dig out and search out. But in Revelation 8, verse 12, it said, Then the fourth angel sounded, the third of the sun was struck, the third of the moon, the third of the stars, and so that a third of them were darkened, so that means the light did not shine, a third of the day did not shine, and, and likewise the night. Now, a, as a comparison, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So here we need to understand that what he's doing is comparing us to the stars, what, what people have called stars, but God also has stars who are his people. So we need to see that a, with a spiritual understanding that those who rule and reign with Christ in his kingdom in the here and now, they uh, that they are the sun, the moon, the stars in the heavens of the spirit of the Lord. That the Lord's realm is not filled with natural light. It's not filled with a sun or a moon or physical stars up in the sky. But there's other lights that he's referring to. And that light refers to you and I. We are a chosen generation known as a royal priesthood. And in the Bible prophecy, the word son is known as the most exalted ruler in any order. The word son is said to refer to God, who is the supreme ruler and is known as a son. Uh, capital uh, S-U-N. But of course, we know that Jesus is the son of God. All right. And then uh, everything around it receives uh, its light from the reflection off of the S-U-N or God, who is the supreme ruler. And he lightens our path. He brightens our path. Uh, uh, his mercies are new every morning uh, uh, to the full day. Uh, God is is doing so much in us. Okay, uh, let's move on. We got a few more scriptures. In, in Psalm chapter 84, verse 11, it says, The Lord God is a sun, S-U-N, and shield, a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And so we know this is true. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So God gives grace and glory. Truth is filled with glory. Uh, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And Jesus, who is our big brother, is also referred to in Scripture as the Son. Look here in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like a stall-fed calf. You'll go out and you'll grow. You'll, you'll, you'll develop. You'll, you'll uh, become what God has already uh, predestined you to be. We also find that 2 Samuel uh, chapter uh, uh, 2, uh, chapter 20, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3 and 4 speaks of God's interaction, interaction with men. Notice here in, it says, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me, and here me refers to a man. He who rules over men best must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he, the man, uh, shall be like the sun of the morning when the sun arises, a morning uh, without clouds like the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Now, although some of those words may not make sense to you, what I want you to get here is there's many references in scripture about the sun. There's many more than this when it comes to references about men or mankind. Now, Father God has told us that heaven is his throne. So I want you to see this is where we're uh, moving toward wrapping this up today. Uh, Isaiah 66 verse 1 says, thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. 
heaven is the throne of God, or we could say that his throne is heaven. Don't, don't use the word, try to, try to omit the word in heaven, but his throne is heaven. The word heaven is not only translated the abode of God in the Greek language, but it also speaks of rulership and dominion, which is where we were just a little bit ago. So the lights of he the heavens refer to individual rulers, not just God, because we're called to rule and reign with God. Read Revelation 5, verse 10. Uh, he, individual rulers who occupy the heavenly thrones of authority and power. Who's, whose throne is in us? It's the throne of Jesus. Amen. The throne of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Complete us. And so that throne, uh, many have scriptures, uh, have, have uh, God has many supernatural rulers in the unseen realm who understand the reign of Christ in the here and now. And, and I've talked about the, the reign, the unseen realm in the past. So you need to go back to some of these other lessons. Uh, but, but let's look again at Revelation 8 verse 13. And I looked and I heard an angel. Translators again say this should uh, uh, read an eagle flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Now, the earth that, uh, uh, the earth is that which is ruled by the heavens. In other words, the, the lesser light is ruled by the greater light. It looks to be the sun, the moon, and the stars. Uh, it looks to the sun, moon, and stars for its light uh, or for its direction. Therefore, the heavenly bodies are viewed completely in relation to the earth realm or the or a, a better way to say it, those who dwell in earthen vessels. Remember, the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? Your body, your your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Which whatever your take is on that, just realize this: that you, as a spirit man with a reborn soul, it cohabit the same space with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, and and the thing is, is that the heavenly bodies. Uh, are in earthen vessels. Amen. All right. Think about that. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 through 10 reads this way. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of God may not uh, make the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. In other words, there's some stuff going on around us, but we're not pressed by it. We're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about the body of the dying, the, the body, the dying in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. This does not say, and it does not mean that as Christ suffered, you got to suffer. That's not what that say. It's saying what Christ did, you are a part of that in that you carry the manifestation of his life, of his sacrifice, of his finished work in your own life. So there is an order of human government right now in the earth. Listen to this. But all of the earthly order of man has passed away even as those heavens pass away with a great noise. And the lights of that order are darkened. That's what we were reading in the beginning of this lesson. Uh, and, and they fell from heaven, which symbolizes the inauguration of a new order. And that new order is the reign of Christ in us. Listen, if you think that Christ is going to come back and step his foot down on this earth in one place uh, and, and then on another place, uh, you're mistaken. We're not talking about a giant Jesus that's going to come and land on the planet. We're talking about a great and mighty God who has landed inside of you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the new order. That's the, the, the new order, which is the reign of Christ in you. Amen. Okay. Now, once again, remember, the fourth day of creation, God ordained the lights of the heavens. What were they? the sun, the moon, and the stars. And when the fourth trumpet sounded in the book of Revelation, it is the heavenly bodies that are the object of the Lord's work. 
So what did the Lord create? The sun, the moon, the stars, the lights. He and and while there is a natural picture of the sun, the moon, the stars, the lights, the things that light our path, there also is a spiritual symbolism. And you are that 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 those luminaries that God has made. Notice Revelation eight verse twelve one more time. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, the third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. The earth uh, of that day did not shine, and likewise the night. So what we see here is how that the message of Jesus in the fourth church, the church at Thyatira, he says that to them that overcome will receive the morning star and become a ruler. Uh, let, let's just go a, a bit forward in Revelation 22, verse 16. Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel, my messenger, and my, is Jesus talking here, to testify to you uh, of the things in the churches. Uh, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So we have learned that Jesus is the bright morning star, amen? So wherever you see bright morning star, you see uh, uh, the shining one, you see those things in scripture, watch out who you label those or attach those words to. He is the most brilliant and brightest of all stars, and we are joint heirs with him, praise the Lord. So it's important to know that Jesus descended from the royal line of David. Amen. We all know that. Uh, and is the star, the king himself, of whom the descendants, uh, uh, of, of to whom it was declared in Numbers chapter 24. We're not, to, uh, I don't think we're going to go there, but I just wanted to mention this to you. In Numbers 24, verse 14 through 19, as the star who would come out of Jacob the possess and possess the scepter. So if you read Numbers 24, 14 through 19, it will help you understand that Jesus rules. He was declared ruler in the book of Numbers, which is the, one of the five books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. But he also is the ruler uh, of our life. So the Lord promises that the overcomer will share in his royalty and in his scepter as the morning star. Um, uh, the, 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 only the overcomer. Now, now listen to this. Whoever you are right now, wherever you're from, whatever's going on in your life, God has called you to be an overcomer. He has predestined you to be nothing less than an overcomer because our overcoming is done in the Christ who overcame. So, so this is why we can say that only overcome, an overcomer will rule and reign with Jesus and walk in and share in his dominion on this earth realm or in this earth, okay? In this earth. This earth is fading away. The, the heavens are fading away. The heavens refer to also as a higher realm of thought. All of our higher realms of thought are fading away. The old heaven, the new heaven, and a new heaven and a new earth. A new establishing order of Christ in us. Now, later on, what we're going to see in the book of Revelation chapter 16 is the pouring out of the fourth veil, which brings a final judgment upon the sun. So you've got to ask you, which sun are we talking about? If we're talking about the final judgment of the sun. Then what sun are we talking about? It must be referring to something other than uh, the, the Lord God or even you and I. We've got to know that this divine, the divine pattern in all of this becomes clear once we understand the truth that's revealed in the book of Revelation pertaining to the revelation of the two heavens and the two earths. Keep in mind that the seer of Patmos, which was the apostle John, beheld this vision and recorded what he saw in the words of Revelation 21 verse 1 and said now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away also there was no more sea okay <coughs> there's a lot can be said here but just understand this there is an old heaven and there is a new heaven there is an old earth and there is a new earth and we'll be getting into that all right, here in Second Peter, uh, verse three, uh, chapter three and verse thirteen, it says, "Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth 
in which righteousness dwells. A new mindset, a new way of seeing God, receiving the revelation of Jesus Christ produces a new heaven and a new earth in you so that the old is passed away because the new has come. Uh, notice this year that the old heaven uh, and the old earth, uh, old earth uh, passed away, yet we look for something new. But what are we looking for? Uh, what we're looking for is the full manifestation of his transforming power in us. Let's read one more scripture this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So how do we know what image we're being transformed in? Well, notice who he talks to. Who are we beholding in a mirror? We're beholding the glory of the Lord, the radiance of the Lord, the light of the Lord. And we're being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. So as we encounter God on all levels, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from encounter to encounter, from revelation to revelation, we're being transformed or coming into an enlightenment of who God predestined us to be. The image of his finished uh, uh, of his finished work uh, is is in us and we're being transformed into that image. Amen. So this new covenant remnant emerges. And as this new covenant remnant emerges, keep your eye open. Uh, who is being bringing healing and order to the chaos in God's creation? We've got to be a people who are willing to get things right in our own thinking regarding who we are in Christ so that well, uh, we will not fall apart when God is working in us to bring an end to some things. There's some old mindsets, some old theology, some old belief systems that need to come to an end. So once again, I ask you a question. Here's my question. You ready for this? Are you ready for what's next? Are you ready for what's next? I'm so excited about the book of Revelation because there's so much valuable information. I taught it one time. I'm right now almost finished with chapter 12. I'm now in chapter 8 in an online study. I can't wait to go back and start over because so much information that pertains to that that I didn't know before as I study, I keep getting more and more at Revelation. And so what's coming next in you is the continuation of change from old mindsets of defeat into a new mindset as sons and daughters of God, uh, who, who are, which is uh, this, it is the mind of Christ in you. God has a new level of thinking for his people, which is to start thinking like kings who operate out of the third heaven dimension. Yes, you're in that dimension. Yes. You are all you access all the realms of God. And for the most part, people just don't know it. Well, listen, although this book was finished over 1900 years ago, prior to A.D. 70, we are not considering a future of what will be. We're looking at we're looking into Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. So I, I want you to stick with me on this journey. Every Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time in the USA, uh, uh, stay with me on this journey so we can continue to see more of the revelation of Jesus, uh, uh, more of the unveiling of Christ in you and Christ in me so that we can discover what John found out as he stepped into that heavenly dimension and it changed him forever. What happened to John? He got a revelation. He got some information and it changed him forever. So you ask me today, where's the church? I'll tell you exactly where the church is. The church is the place that she's always been seated in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're seated in Christ. We already live and move and have our being in him. Hallelujah. Out of our third heaven dimension. Praise the Lord. Out of that heavenly realm, the heavenly places, which is Christ, the heavenly cross. The Bible said in Ephesians 1 verse 3, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. The heavenly places there actually means the heavenly Christ. Amen. And so we're doing this by looking at this powerful revelation, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Folks, we got to take on heaven's mindset now in this life. 
so that we can experience heaven on earth. Amen. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Thank you for watching today. Join me again next time. I have another broadcast at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time in the morning on Rightly Dividing Truth. Tomorrow night, Kingdom Dynamics, Bishop Chuck Wallace will be with me. Friday morning, uh, my school of ministry, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, uh, 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 Friday morning conversations at 10 a.m. And then at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time is my school of ministry. So many things going on, so much to learn, so much to investigate and look at it, so much to devour, to learn and to grow into that same image of the Lord Jesus Christ from glory to glory. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.